Many of us rely on the generosity of others for our sport, and even though the summer is when you may hope to reap the rewards of pest control you carried out during the winter, it serves to be considerate all year round. So after each time that we've been around and looked for a bug, we're just going to have a quick squeak and just see if we can get any interest from the foxes. We're going to be coming back up in a few nights with the night vision to finish them off, but it would be nice if we can clear a few in the daytime. Roy has the chance of a Hampshire buck this evening, but he's doubling up. This ground hosts a commercial shoot, and the partridges are especially easily picked off by the foxes. We stop and call, stop and call, but the deer are just not moving yet. The sun is on its way down. Well, we've been mooching around, sort of questing around for a buck now for about two hours, and there's just nothing moving, nothing playing. I'm not sure where we are. I know the rut's been happening in certain parts of Hampshire, and I'm not sure if this cold wind that we've got coming through has just cooled their ardour again a little bit. And all I'm hoping for is they might just get on their feet and become a little bit more active a little bit later on. Uh, I think we've probably got about an hour of shootable daylight left. We're just gonna go around as many places as we can, just see if we can see any deer on their feet, any movement, um, change tact a little bit, and then if we see some, we'll see what sort of response we get. Because otherwise, when you're just calling into the void of the countryside like this and not getting any responses, it can just seem very demoralising. And at the moment, it is. We see our first row. She's curious, but has spotted us. Roy persists, just in case a buck is not far behind. She would have come closer, but she made David standing out on the edge here. Um, and now she's just sitting in there, but it's amazing, even though you know where she is. Incredibly difficult to pick out, and that's in the shoulder grass. Crossing to the other side of the farm, and we see this sight. A doe with a youngster, and, on the adjacent field, a buck on a doe's tail. Roy thinks he's locked on, and even Roy's charms will be ignored. I'm torn at the moment. I don't know quite which way to go with it. I don't know whether to try for these, because we know we're playing, but he is absolutely glued onto a doe. So the chances of him getting to leave and come out and play with us are quite slim. And that wood is far too deep and thick to try and stalk up to him in there at the moment, especially with fading light. Or we go and see if we can find a buck that's a little bit more willing to play somewhere else that's not on the backside of a doe. You know, my gut is telling me to try and find something that's not glued on that we might be able to call out and play with. Roy's decision pays off. Suddenly, deer are everywhere. All of a sudden, everything has just started to turn on. Unfortunately, he's gone back in the thicket there. He came up and made us from behind. He's gone back down and run back in. There we go. We spot another animal. Roy feels we've pushed it as far as we can. Isn't that amazing though? We spent three hours looking around and had absolutely no interest apart from that doe. And then all of a sudden, in the last half an hour of light, that cold wind's died down, it's got muggy again, and everything's just burst out. Every field that we were looking in had activity. There were just deer moving all over the place. And that's all you need. You just need that little bit of luck, right place at the right time, and for the rut to be in full swing as it is now. But if you'd been walking around here earlier and you didn't know any better, you would have said the place was devoid of deer. But as I say, last half an hour, everything's just come to life. And luckily, we managed to take another one home for the freezer. With the buck in the bag, Roy doesn't head off thinking about venison fillet, but puts in another hour of foxing. The ground is heavily keepered, but with game birds on the ground, it pays to be vigilant. Our third field gives us two opportunities in quick succession. As I say, I don't like coming onto an estate and not returning the favour, so 
it was only fair that we came out and had a go and see if we could clear up a couple of foxes. And uh, luckily we did. So I think I've earned my Burger King now, David. It's your turn. Double Whopper. Double Whopper with cheese. Two. Oh, I might be able to squeeze one in. The shoot owner is happy and Roy's row is going to taste that much sweeter. <laughs>